Hello RC enthusiasts, this is Dave from MeRC and we're getting ready to do the maiden flight on the Dancing Wings Eagle 1430mm V2 and I've got it on the CG stand right now trying to figure out the placement of the battery and trying to figure out the CG. The manual says about 60 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing and if you look under here you'll see the CG stand is right in front of that front wing spar which is about 60 millimeters. So let's measure the distance of the battery from the servo tray. Just adjust it. And we got 35 millimeters, or about an inch and three eighths. So 35 millimeters is what it measures on mine, but yours may vary depending on the weight distribution. Okay, now that we got the battery placement figured out, let's just take it out and fly it and we'll see if we have to adjust it some more after the first flight and then try it again. Somebody looking for a golf ball? I think it might be just the neighbor. Okay, so it's Sunday. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's about 41 degrees. Let's lay that down there. Wait for that golf cart to clear. A little breeze about five miles, maybe four miles an hour. And it's coming from over there. <clears throat> so I guess I'll be throwing it with the wind. Telemetry recovered. There we go. A little shaky on the takeoff. And the rudder works correctly. Let's try that rudder. Somebody's hitting golf balls. Seems to me the battery could go forward a little more. Maybe I should have just made it even with the battery tray. Let's make a little quick pass. Yeah, the wind just blew it right away. Good and maneuverable though. Yeah, the wind's really hitting it now. There's a loop-de-loop. -loop. Better throttle down and bring it in. I'm just having trouble getting it back up here. Maybe if I give it some down some down elevator and some throttle. I can get it back over here, but the wind has really got it. All right, let's just land it. Beautiful landing. Well, you can see how that prop worked. The prop saver worked as usual. But let's see here. There's the battery. You can see how I had it. It was hanging over the battery tray just a little. Let's move it a lot more forward. Now I've got it, uh, that's a good two inches away from the servo tray now. It's way in, way in the four. Now I've got it two inches in front of the servo tray. So the battery's more in the front and hopefully That'll help it fight the wind a little bit better. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, look at that. Now it's more like it's on rails. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. You gotta have the battery further forward than I thought. Not having any problems now. On a nice calm day, I think where I had the battery about an inch and a half from the servo tray would have been fine with no wind. But when you got wind, you need a little more nose heavy. Get that authority. Because the wind tends to pick the nose up. 
Now it doesn't seem to be affected no matter whether it goes into the wind or not. It's doing good. Well, I learned something anyway. Other than that, it's pretty much a no-brainer. No dramas other than just moving the battery around till you get it right. And it's a 2200 milliamp hour, three cell, which is what's recommended. This is the 1430 millimeter Eagle and on the, uh, on the smaller one, the 1200, it was a 1500 three cell battery. So this has got a heavier battery in it, but it, uh, it needs it. It needs that extra weight. All right, just doing beautiful. Now that I got my confidence up in the configuration, let's bring it by for a slow pass. Come down low. And right at me, and there we go. Beautiful. I'm using the rudder a little bit too, my rudder stick, and that really helps to bring it around. It's not all bank and yank. You can use the rudder. I've got a kind of a, a habit of using the rudder now. When I first started flying, the rudder was like something I never touched. And uh, now I feel like I need it. It's like part of me now. All right, we'll do another slow pass here. If you could call it slow. There we go. That's pretty. That's pretty. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in since it's getting nice and low now. Well, it's going over the hill there a little bit. Oh boy, does that float. I think that's the balance right there. That is the perfect balance. Let's just take a look at the battery placement again. And so we can kind of measure where the battery is for the perfect flight. So let's go ahead and measure the distance from the butt of the battery to the servo tray. Just adjusting. All right. And I've got 50 millimeters. So I got 1.968 inches or 50 millimeters. The manual says the CG should be about 60 millimeters but let's just put it on the stand and see what we really have with the new battery placement. Let's go this side forward a little bit. That's maybe too much. No, I don't know. That's pretty balanced right there. So now let's just go ahead and measure it. Right about there. Oh yeah. I got more like 50. So that makes it easy to remember. If you remember, the battery goes 50 millimeters in front of the servo tray, and I got the CG on about 50 millimeters. So 50-50, right? Almost forgot, you probably would like to know how much battery I used on those two flights. So let's check it out here. Here I thought it was sucking a lot of juice out of the thing. Apparently it's very efficient. It's only 71%, or you can see right here the actual voltage. But uh, yeah, that's it. So a great little flyer and very efficient. As a side note, I think this 920 kV motor actually performed pretty good with this 9x5 prop, and these were stock in the kit. So I was happy with that. Originally I'd been thinking of changing it for an 1100 kV Sunny Sky motor, but I never did because I wanted to check the stock motor and see how it did. And I'm really happy with it. I think I'll just stick with it. It seems to work well. Also, I think having the V-tail at 120 degrees angle instead of 90 degrees like the manual has is actually a help because it seems to have more authority with the elevator than it would if it was on 90 degrees. And it does give it more of a bird look. So, yeah, I'm happy with that change too. I'm really pleased with the battery tray mod. It came out really good. It makes it easy to get the battery in and out. It sits nice and level in there. 
and you can see I've got a mark right there where the end of the battery sits when it's installed to get the proper CG. Now some of my viewers have asked why did I use the more expensive Metal Gear Emax servos on the V-tail while using the cheaper plastic gear servos that came stock for the ailerons. And the reason was I found out that this plane doesn't fly very good if there's a failure on either one of these V-tail servos. If these fail, your plane's almost definitely going down. If the ailerons fail, like it did on me one day, I can still just use my rudder and elevator with these servos to fly the plane down and make a good landing. So that's the reason that, and I just wanted to save a little bit of money by not also putting Metal Gear servos here. So that's the answer. I hope that helps. So another question I had was what size fuel line hose am I using to hold the clevis together? And uh, here it is right here measuring it and it is a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeters. Now I installed the servos sort of opposite to the way they are in the manual. You can see the manual's picture right there and that's the way I have it. But I think they worked out just fine. And this is the way I have it in my smaller Eagle. And I, I just wanted to keep it that way so it matched my radio settings. Also, you can see that the end of the control rods just make it to the keeper right there and stick out a little bit. So there was no extra. They just fit just right. One other thing was the latex paint that I painted the bottom with. This is one coat latex paint. And the reason I painted it was to prevent the grass from staining the foam when it landed. And it seems to have worked. I can just see one little streak right there. But uh, that will probably wipe right off if I just take a wet rag. 